station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. Cosmopolitan.com, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Emma Barker with Cosmopolitan.com. How do you hear me? Hi, I've got you loud and clear. Hello from the International Space Station. Hello. Um, so we're good to go along with questions? Okay, we're doing, so we're doing this story because a lot of millennial women really want to break out of their daily grind right now. You work as a bi biologist, um, but you made your career a little more exciting by doing it in space. Um, I know you've always wanted to go to space eventually, but where were you? And what was the one moment when you decided, I have to be doing this work in space? That's a great question. I don't think you ever really decide uh, that you want to be an astronaut. There's uh, so many people that want to do this job, and there's so many factors that have to come into play. So people ask me about how, how did you decide you wanted to do this, and I, I basically was just incredibly lucky. Um, so I think, uh, you know, you put in your application, uh, you hope for the best, and uh, I think there's a lot of people that have dreams about going to space. Um, and I just happened to luck out and uh, get to be selected. But it's really nothing that I ever controlled or decided or made happen. Okay. Um, so what does it feel like physically and mentally and emotionally to blast off into space? Like describe how, what that feeling was like. Yeah, we do a lot of training in the simulator. So we spend hundreds of hours getting into the Soyuz sim. That's our spacecraft. And the actual spacecraft looks a lot like the sim. So when you're sitting in the Soyuz on the launch pad, it all looks familiar. Everything feels comfortable. And then you think for a second, oh, wait. I'm actually sitting on top of a rocket. So there's, uh, there's quite a few hours before you launch. Uh, you have a little bit of time to think and, and uh, reevaluate your life priorities. At that point, it's a little bit too late to back out, and you're just pretty much along for the ride. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's very incredible that we launch human beings into space. Yeah. Uh, so you've been up there for about three months. Um, what do you miss most about life on Earth, and what are you glad that you don't have to deal with up there? So I miss the smell and the sound of nature a lot. Uh, just being able to go outside, take a walk, see trees. We're in a controlled environment up here, which is truly amazing. The fact that we recycle all of our air and our water, uh, we're really proving a lot of technologies for how we can conserve resources up here. But what you do miss is all of those natural resources on the planet. Uh, the planet is beautiful, and we get a chance to view it from a completely different perspective up here. One thing that I'm pretty glad I'm missing, uh, is, frankly, is the U.S. election season. It's, uh, it's a little nice to be off the planet right now. That's great. Um... What is something that you can do when you're weightless that no one on Earth realizes that you can do? Well, you probably know that we can float, um, but I don't know if you know that we can walk on walls. I was practicing this the other day. So you can walk up the wall if you go incredibly slowly. Um, the thing that I've been the most interested in is how fluids behave in microgravity. Uh, you get uh, all of this uh, when fluids are in free float, you get all of these different dynamic properties. And uh, one of the things that you can do in weightlessness is actually take a look at how fluids are behaving. And I think we're quite, getting quite a bit of science out of uh, some of these investigations that we're doing up here on fluid behavior. Um, what has been your scariest moment in space? I wouldn't say that we really have scary moments up here. We train incredibly hard and we simulate a lot of really, I think what would seem to most people to be very scary situations. Uh, for example, launch, doing a spacewalk, depressurizing to absolute vacuum, 
Uh, when we did some training with the Navy, they strap you into a helicopter simulator, flip you upside down, dunk you in a pool, and you basically drown for a couple minutes until you can rescue yourself. So you do a lot of these kinds of training events uh, really to overcome your fear and to be able to operate in any kind of situation. We have to be able to respond to an emergency up here. So uh, fear, being scared, that kind of response doesn't serve you particularly well in an operational environment. Uh, and, and we basically just train it out of people. Wow. Okay. Um, well, I imagine it's still, there are still stressful, some stressful moments. So what do you do to unwind when you're up there? Do you read books? And how does that compare to what you do at home? Yeah, so uh, up here we have the world's most amazing television set, which is a window with a view of the planet. So I have to say there's a lot of activities uh, that I do at home uh, that I really don't want to even do up here because that's time that we could be spending looking at the planet or taking photos or seeing what's happening in the world around us as we're all in free fall. The entire station is in free fall. So we talk about uh, weightlessness and microgravity, but really what it is is, is we're constantly falling and, and all of these objects, even this microphone here, is falling with me. And so you end up just uh, doing experiments about what happens to physics, what happens to biology in free fall. So it's a lot of experiments and a lot of looking out the window. That must be such a weird feeling. Um, have you, I imagine um, space might kind of like change your mindset a little bit. Have you hatched any really great ideas while up there that you plan to execute when you get home? Or has space like impacted your creativity at all? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a scientist, so I'm not necessarily sure I can lay claim to a whole lot of creativity. But uh, it has impacted my ability to think about uh, ways that we might do future experiments up here. Actually seeing all of these changes uh, has been spurring a lot of ideas for me about the kinds of research that we might do going forward. Um, and I do have to say it, it changes your perspective a lot to be able to look out the window and see the planet. One of the thoughts that I had when I first got up here was we, we really actually live on a planet. I mean, this is something that you know, obviously, you're not, you're not going to dispute that fact. But to see the planet, uh, you just keep thinking we, we really do live on a planet and we are in a solar system and we are flying through space right now. So amazing. Um, does being in space feel like an escape from your kind of like daily life or the life that you had back on Earth? I wouldn't say it's an escape. Um, it's, it's really what we're trained to do. So we train for years before we fly. We practice all of the kinds of activities and experiments we do uh, up here. So we train for hundreds of thousands of hours on the ground. So really, it actually feels quite normal. It, it feels like uh, everything that I've been doing for the last seven years, it just is all truly in low Earth orbit this time instead of a simulator in one of our buildings at NASA. Um, so one quick experiment for us, uh, an, an astronaut that we interviewed before said that it's really hard to wash your hair in space, and so she uses a lot of dry shampoo. And I was wondering if you could show us how it works to use dry shampoo up there. Yeah, so um, not sure where you got that information. We don't, uh, we really don't have dry shampoo up here. Uh, that's particulate that would float. Uh, you wouldn't be able to really control it. So uh, we can wash our hair. Uh, we do that a little bit less. We like to conserve water up here. Um, but you can just take a normal drink bag. Uh, this, is what we, this is what we drink out of. And uh, just use this. Put a little bit of water in your hair. Um, we use a small amount of shampoo. And it's not that different than you would think uh, in terms of what we, what we do on Earth. So. Uh, living up here sometimes is amazing and fascinating and completely different. Sometimes it is uh, just as normal as you would expect on the planet. All right, one quick last question. Um, 
a lot of people have this sort of melancholy feeling after they achieve a huge goal, like going to space. Um, like now what? So how are you feeling about your return to Earth? I'm enjoying every moment in space. Uh, it's really an amazing laboratory that we have up here. I am looking forward to going back to Earth. And when we come back to the planet, we don't just quit uh, what we've been doing. We take all of this knowledge and experience and we actually turn that back into NASA and work on future expeditions and future space flights. So I'm really just looking forward to working with the ground teams, getting back into mission control and redesigning the next set of hardware and experiments for future astronauts that are going to fly on board the space station. Great. All right, I think that's all I have. All right, excellent. It was great talking to you today. I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into space station life. And uh, we'd like to say hello from the uh, crew of Expedition 49. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you, Cosmopolitan.com. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.